Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including The Promised Neverland, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Michelle Ander. Hello. April Collins. Hi. And Allie Martin. Hey, everybody. Uh, yes, more of The Promised Neverland coverage. Uh, we covered the premiere this week at the Overly Animated Podcast, and now we're getting into episode two that aired on Thursday afternoons U.S. time. It looks like it's when the show is going to air. Uh, episode two, 13, 10, 45. Um, looks like we are going to be going by what day it is naming schema. So as, as we discovered at the end of last podcast. So yeah, this is the October 13th, uh, 2045, I think is, is what we're going for here. Um, so the next day after the previous one. And yeah, we'll be potentially doing every week coverage of the promise neverland here at the overlimited podcast it'll be in our anime feed so if you want to just subscribe for this and other the very sporadic other anime podcasts check that out at uh, or uh, by searching on itunes overly animated anime you can find just the anime specific feed or our main feed as well and we cross post all our podcasts to youtube at youtube.com slash overly animated and find all of our stuff at overly animated.com um, yes, if you've not checked out Promise Neverland, make sure you check out the episode. This is like, you don't want to be spoiled for the show. So stop, go watch the premiere, and then also watch episode two, because we're talking about both of the first episodes here. So spoilers for the first two episodes of the Promise Neverland. Um, no manga spoilers here. Um, don't put those in the comments. No, if you don't spoil us. <laughs> Michelle has read the manga, so we have a, a, a manga expert here who can tell us how it compares, um, but uh, we'll not be getting into spoilers, just like maybe comparing how, how things are in this adaptation, uh, this anime adaptation of the show. Um, yes, let's get into things, though. Episode two of The Promised Neverland. Michelle, what did you think? I I was really pleasantly surprised, I think by both of them, because I really didn't I don't think there was a ton of press coverage for this anime before it actually dropped. I think they kept it pretty hush hush mm-hmm. in the first trailer they released. Like there was barely any actual character animation in it. So they were really building the hype for you knowing as little as possible. Um, and it's like really kind of astounding how nice it's been so far. I should also point out this is the only anime I've ever seen that I read a manga first. I okay. never read manga. This was a special case because it was just really, really, really good. And I couldn't put it down. But like it's like kind of verbatim what the first five um chapters of the manga are these first two episodes and it's just really it's really nice to see like so much of the dialogue is exactly the same the characters like brought to life so beautifully there's so much loving detail and just like a lot of the gestures and highlighting a lot of their expressions in a way that I think like kind of brings it to an even more kind of visceral nice place than the manga can even capture at points um, so I'm like super high. This is gonna be so fun to watch. I mean, it's good. It's like kind of like you know, like they're like actual people die. Obviously, one's already died, so that's like a little sad. But like the stakes are real, and that's kind of exciting too. So I'm super high on the first two episodes. Nice. Okay, good stuff there from Michelle. April, what did you think of the second episode of The Promise Neverland? Um, I really liked the second episode because the first episode, like. I think we've all been saying is just like, it's a huge high. And so um, with a lot of like really big first episodes, and then you get into the second one, the second one always seems to just kind of fall flat. But I think this one really kept like the momentum of the show going and like continued like that the stakes were very, very real um, for all of our characters. And like, I just love, you know, the like, I love like the subtle differences and like, that how they changed the mom's um, character design. Like, they're so subtle, but you can, like, now see, like, her very, like, menacing moments versus, like, her being, like, sweet and innocent. And it's not like they changed mm. what she looks like, but I love, like, small details like that. And I think the show is just super successful and, uh, like, I guess, subtly giving you, like, pieces of things. And I like this whole, like, cat and mouse game that's being played. Um, Yeah, and Emma's just such a sweet girl. And poor thing, I I hope realities. I I hope she gets what she wants. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we. (laughs) this might be the type of show where we have to be uh, expecting (laughs) bad things to happen. (laughs) Oh, I fully expect bad (laughs) things to happen. But there's, like, like, I have moments where I'm just like, Emma, no, girl, like, can we... 
you, like you have to realize like what's going on and then she she just continues like we're gonna save everyone and i'm like no. <laughs> oh, no. and brian's just like i this doesn't make any sense yeah. but you're, <laughs> you're so you're, determined you're okay a smart girl you should yeah. know better yeah and like norma too like norma i thought you were more logical than this he's like no no i want to help emma i want to help her too <laughs> yeah yeah we'll, we'll get into all this uh ali what did you think of episode two here i was also kind of well not kind of I was pleasantly surprised with how it it stayed kind of interesting because the first episode I thought was going to be kind of hard to beat with the initial shock factor of you know demons are collecting human meat blah 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 but I was glad to see first of all the kids dynamic with each other and like trying to think about things rationally but also not so much if that makes sense and I was really mostly impressed with um Emma's maturity to keep you know, calm and collected. I thought she was probably going to break really soon. So, and the animation is also done beautifully. I also really like the subtleties, like with the eyes and the expressions. And I don't know. I'm, I'm, I also thought it would kind of slow down, but it, I'm getting more stressed just watching this episode. <laughs> this is very stressful. Yeah, <laughs> That's good it thing. is stressful, especially with like the mom yeah. jump scare. I was like, oh, hello. Oh, okay. uh, that that got me. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah, it was really well timed. Yeah. yeah, stressful and uh, very fast paced, I think definitely continues here. Um, yeah, if, if you didn't listen to our first podcast, we were like very high in the first episode. I, I thought that was like the best first episode of an anime I'd seen in years. And, um, I, it was, it was so incredible that it was inevitable that things would come down a little bit. And I do think this episode two is a lot worse than the first episode, but it's still good. Like it's, it's still good. Um, the, I, I'm worried that we're gonna f- like the part of the first episode I didn't connect with as much was like the tag strategy discussions and like we talk about strategy and stuff like that and that's kind of what the second episode focused the most on um there's a lot of like strat discussion of how we're going to approach this strategically and how we're going to like like we're trying to discern details of what's actually happening um you know with with the demons and everything and um i'm i'm not uh loving that type of thing as much but there's still like the qualities i think that made the first episode so special specifically the hallway scene and like the night hallway scene um we talked about that mom jump scare oh, like yeah. that entire scene mm-hmm. that was phenomenal i thought that was all everything there was as good as the first episode uh yeah. just emma like putting on a, a brave face uh when when like just his mom like c- came up to her like face to face really scary like um and then uh, like norman watching and reacting and then they they get out and like mom's like you weren't there were you it's fine as you weren't there and then they get out and then emma's like collapsing and like stop yeah. Yeah. i yeah. collapsed with emma <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like, out of the chair that that scene yeah. is like so good um on the other hand i think this like norman and ray standoff scene um i really didn't like that one uh the one and, at the end you mean yeah yeah Can you say the why though why didn't why didn't you it, like it? It feels villain? like yeah. a typical. I don't know if I'm sh- shown in what 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 what, what word is the what's, no. what's the right genre? What's the right genre for this? Like it feels Are you like a typical. To call them rivals. It's like oh, rivals, dramatic music, face off. Oh, like uh, it's no. like this is like it was a little bit too much in that in in that stance, and they're just like swelling music and yelling at each other, and it didn't it didn't feel like they the type of yelling. tone that I I loved from uh from from the first episode. You know, I don't I don't need the the kids uh, facing off uh, over over like uh there's they're, and like it's like oh it's all because emma and you know like some gender things too and and it's like oh and Nor- norman likes emma that's interesting but um okay so just I wait we're gonna talk about a few you. more episodes don't, no don't say that type of thing okay <laughs> no, no no okay I, I get where you're coming from though because yeah. i remember reading the manga be like wait what like norman norman likes and i'm like what what's gonna happen with that but I think we haven't seen a ton of these three interact. We know right from the first episode that they were, you know, very close as kids. They are the top three smartest people in this orphanage. That gives them their own kind of closeness, too. They're the only three that really gets each other on that kind of level. We haven't seen them interact a ton, though. So I think once that's fleshed out more with where the story is going, it will make a little more sense. And this won't feel as much like a rivalry. Cause I get why it feels that way to you right now, but that's, it's not like it's, it's not though. Okay, <laughs> I'm, not I'm, going for. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not passing judgment. I'm open to. That. I just think them like saying this is how the scene presented it. Um, mm-hmm. and I wasn't crazy yeah. about that, but I'm not uh totally against like uh 
Norman and Ray's learning more about their interactions in the future. And there's clearly a ton of uh, interesting things I think we we could do. Like the whole like boat made of mud thing. Um, that was like kind of bad. I think. Um, I love that. Then. He's basically. I was gonna say I like I like yeah. it. It made more sense to me once, like, because what was it? Ray was like, like you're just making a boat out of mud, and then Norman like comes back at him with like the whole logic of that like yeah but if you bake mud then it's more like it's not mud anymore and it's then you can actually right yeah you actually have a boat then and so I really thought that was like unique and it it kind of helped display like their characters because you know Norman's like praised for being the smartest one and then Ray keeps up with him and so I think that just for, further like I guess like set that tone like Norman like is already that smart and so it, and it wasn't necessarily that like he was fighting with Ray about it he's like look I understand like this is impossible but it's almost like he's saying like we're already in this like impossible situation so then like what's the point like let's go ahead and try and save all 37 kids or I guess now it's 38 again but like I don't know like I thought that was very a very like nice I don't like I enjoyed that conversation. I'm sorry. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. He's basically like, saying really, really well, April. If you put anyone under enough pressure, you can do anything, basically. Yeah. I mean, uh, if they're gonna die, at least go like go out trying to escape versus like just letting yeah, themselves be farmed, you know? Far, farmed. <laughs> yeah. Farmed. Uh, okay, farmed. that's okay, that's cool that I am I'm, I'm the only one is down on that. That's good. Um it's a good sign, I think, for but yeah, in in general that less that type of thing more. The uh the horror elements infused with the the slice of like I life I feel like is is what I got from the first episode. A s- small thing I'm worried about is no uh, demon what? action what? in this episode. Um I was as as fast paced as it went, we didn't necessarily see uh, demons like we did in the first episode. I wonder if that's only gonna be like every special episode type thing. Because I thought that was like a really special part of it. like that's when it felt like the first episode felt like wow it like really is going there when we just see the actual demons like it's going moving so fast and these we're already seeing these these creatures um um so none of that here except in emma's dream in the beginning which i thought was really good um mm-hmm. but uh, i like how that also depicted them as way more creepy yeah, yeah. Oh, even, yeah. Even like more so, yeah. table <laughs> and then she's yeah yeah oh and another thing i want to say is one thing i did like is this episode continued the uh time uh theme and the clock imagery mm. that we got from the first mm. episode um that was done well yeah especially this like probably my favorite uh like kind of like animation shot of the thing is right in the beginning when uh the yeah. clock is ticking and it's moving back and forth the camera um with emma mm-hmm. up in the middle of the night there uh i think like the, when we've done interesting things with with the time uh the time theme i think that that's been really successful and it does continue in their conversations and stuff here um so uh because yeah because that's something i was worried about dropping off just because sometimes uh, animes like in the pilot artistically present something that's not uh, consistently shown throughout the season so i'm i think there are a lot of reasons to be optimistic uh from the second episode I think yeah. time's very important to like what's going on in the situation because they sort of established that timeline. Like we have two months, mm-hmm. so yeah. Uh, like, so I think <laughs> yeah, I think, like it further just drives home that point that like we're emphasizing like time and how it exists within the show, in, in especially with like the ticking camera kind of thing. Like I thought that was, I agree, that was brilliant. It is of the essence. Yeah, the the uh, of the essence. Yeah, the fly the, the the whole discussion there in that flashback scene when they're kind of hashing things out on what's going on. Yeah, I agree. Time is an undercurrent of everything there. Um, so th- that's uh that was really successful transitioning from kind of the the ticking and the clock image, and also the you know the the, the clock imagery is and is, is subtle throughout the entire thing. There's a shot of a clock, then like Ray is like, or I don't know, the, the the dude that was friends with Connie is like asking uh Norman like to fix a clock. Like it's 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 oh, yeah. yeah they're putting oh, they're putting yeah. kind of all of it yeah. throughout that yeah. Um, so I, I think that that's been uh, it. Kind of, I don't know. Almost gives it a little bit of a fairy tale type quality to everything that's happening, um, mm-hmm. which I think you get a little bit from from the show. But um, definitely, definitely would like that to continue. And that was another strong element here. Um, I guess let, I want to talk about that flashback scene first because that had the most new information. Uh, like this, it's it's uh, the one. It's basically one of the first things in the episode after the OP plays, uh, where um, we we see like. Uh, uh, Emma and uh, Norman decompressing on on what's happening here and uh they they basically the big conclusion is you just got to behave like normal um mom doesn't know who left the bunny there um but she totally does 
She does. She has her suspicions, at least. We can, she we has can, her not. suspicions. We can, we can get what dumb. you guys. We can get what you guys uh, into what you guys think of mom in a second. But um, yeah, she's uh, <laughs> Emma says this is all to uh, maintain our quality as merchandise. Um, I do think this episode continues kind of the anti factory farming themes that I talked about in the first podcast that I'm really into <laughs> from the show. I think it's kind of just an undercurrent of everything <laughs> that's happening here. Mm. Um, and uh, so they they they're this is just them speculating, I, I think, but um, it's presented to us as factual. Um, but I do think that like when it's just the character speculating and it's not presented objectively, things could be subverted later. Later, um, but they say the older. The older, like, kid is higher quality meats. Um, they're shipped out when they're six to 12. Um, after, so, okay, so this is something that I didn't say correctly on the first podcast, but I think it's because the first episode didn't really tell me this. I, I was under the impression after the first episode that only when they're 12, they get shipped out, like, only when someone turns 12. So I thought Connie was 12. I thought she turned 12, but it turns out she's. She's six based on this conversation. You six. Can get, yeah. How you did can get you think she was 12? At the beginning, it establishes <laughs> that the three of them are 11. Um, right. So I thought, like, that it's when you're 12, you get shipped off. I don't think the first episode was I think, pretty clear about that. Well, uh, I think it, it could – I guess I can see where you got a little bit, like – confused because they say that no one stays past 12 right right and they, right. they don't really they don't really tell us the thing they, they, right so that's what i thought it was this episode um is i don't know if i'm not gonna say that was like a thing that like the first episode did wrong but it's sir at the very least it was very unclear if not presented in a different way but this episode is telling us that um you could sometime between six to twelve they are uh, they're they're shipped off and um at, at starting at six the ones that they're they're speculating that the ones are harvested with the lowest test scores the brain probably tastes the best and the more developed the better so we're so we're, we're <laughs> speculating is, do they make cows take tests at the farms I hope so <laughs> that's a, I mean I, think, <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think uh we're uh, our our perceptions are as uh, we can like taste things as much as demons can. I guess like I guess they can taste the quality yeah, development right. of a brain. I still feel like I don't know. I feel like people eat them, not demons. I think that's just me though. I what do you think the that, demons right. do if they don't eat the people? They're like the workers who harvest them. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe people are the demons. Well, that's honey, true. I'm we only we only saw low harvest. level demons. Like uh, why would they ha- harvest? people to eat them I mean do you think they'd have any moral quandaries about that or do you think it's not if they're they're rich enough (laughs) not if they're rich enough it's a cannibalistic society that's being presented interesting Um, I'm just like I don't like because I mean we'll get into it probably later but when they were talking about like that we're going into a demon's world I feel like humans are definitely still involved right we'll get get to that in a second it's 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 yeah again though that that's a similar thing like i'm talking about now like this is just them spitballing basically yeah so so it, it, and not all of this could be wrong um and then uh <laughs> all of it <laughs> they say the next shipment is two months from now as we talked about um so yeah the revel I, i'm impressed by how quickly we kind of explain the test score thing or at least we're attempting to explain that that was good because yeah. that was a big question coming out like why do they care about their test scores oh they're eating their brains that, that's a good explanation <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, people or do that. maybe the test scores are like, okay, well, these are obviously smart humans, so we can save them so that they can br- produce more babies that we can eat. Oh, oh so that, that is a question: is what's the source right. of the kids coming you into would. the that, farm? See, that was my biggest question. Was yeah. like, and then when they said the thing about like, there's a shipment every two months. I was like, okay, well, there's nothing sustainable about this farm. Like, how has it not already been shut down? Because like, you would go through, <laughs> you would go through kids so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So is everyone um, just getting quote unquote second, adopted every this, two months? When the yeah. second adult came in at the end of the episode, she was carrying a newborn kid or like a toddler. Where did that baby it's come like, from? Yeah, Where exactly. did the other adult come from? Where's her mom? One comes in again to right. replenish. Right. Yeah, so let, let's get let's move to the the thing that Ali just talked about, where they they make uh they, there's this whole like Emma didn't realize that there's a there's there's a, it's a demon society outside, no place for humans. Um, and then like Norman was That's hiding that. Definitely from, not true. From her. Um, I think we like at the very least, this that. is a logical conclusion to draw, considering that uh, like what they talked about, like this is a farm that demons are running. They're getting shipped somewhere. Um, you know, if demons are farming humans, there must be demons uh, in control of at least the area that they're in. Uh. Yeah, so Allie, you're not. But why are you not buying this, Allie? 
I don't know. It just doesn't seem possible <laughs> because the humans on the farm, like, well, not the humans, the adults on the farm are in on it. So there have to be more. Right. And what, like, why do they get to live? Are they just like, like what happens super smart? All the adults what, die? Why, do you, why do you think they would get to live? What, what about, <laughs> what I mean, Okay, think about it this way, Allie. If you if you're in a situation where, yeah, it's not ideal, but at least I'm not dead, like wouldn't you want to comply and do the best job with well, them? Well, yeah, but I'm just wondering why they didn't get them? farmed. I mean, I, cuz they're they have adults. To farm well, well, right. So like, so why is mom why, and like why keep them and not others to yeah. live? It's why, so there definitely question. have to be a bunch of others that are alive, maybe on other farms, maybe doing who knows what. Maybe there's different farms. Like this is the yeah, that's what I assume. Kitty farm. There's a farm for just producing babies. There's a farm <laughs> preteen farm, <laughs> pre-teen high schooler pre-teen. farm. <laughs> I want to watch the anime farm. about the preteen farm. <laughs> <laughs> the most rowdy farm. Yeah, <laughs> all the hormones are changing. Yeah, no one would want to eat those. <laughs> <laughs> Dark quality of what we're doing. Yeah, I I think like one thing we're driving at here is that there clearly there's humans involved to some capacity. That I think that's what the episode is is telling us because Sister Crone comes in at the end, like yes, there is another human here, and also just the implication of like of uh, Carol, the new uh, kid that comes. Like how 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 was she made? Right? Like how is how what what, how are the kids here? When a mommy and a daddy. Test two babies. Love each other. Well, Test you know, de- demons are advanced enough to control humans. Maybe they can just produce humans, uh, yeah, scientifically or something. Um, I but... thought the tube that they put Connie in was like a, um, a cloning tube at first. Right, Connie, so they right? They have... Connie put, put in a tube. It's What's up with that? Preser- it, no, it's a meat preservation tube. Yeah. So that's, that's, I mean, it's possible. You know, but yeah. they could Perfect. have other myth. Yeah, like, what um, about, what about the rose that was in Connie? What's that doing? That's, that's yeah, possible. That, I'm, I'm still confused about that. You're asking, though. Yeah, Where are those flowers coming okay. from? No, that's <laughs> Where are the flowers coming from? We're gonna get into a Steven <laughs> that's Universe. That's the real question. question. <laughs> so, those, it, so clearly though, there's role, there's more of a human role than uh, it might be. You might initially think, oh, they're just on like an alien demon planet or something. Um, I still think it's possible they're in like a dome or something, and that the rest of the out- that's what we speculated on the first one. The rest of the outside world looks completely different. This just looks like Earth. Um, mm-hmm. But again, one of the big t- discussion points in the first podcast was. Uh, why is mom Isabel uh, acting this way? Like, and I think a conclusion that we were all attached to was that she is like, since we're, this is anti-factory farming, uh, like meta, like, uh, is themes that we're going for she's the farmer she is like the person that's um the farm that's like petting the cow and then like caring about it and taking care of it and like she genuinely cares about it but then also she slaughters it to eat it um and, and yeah. So, yeah yeah that makes total sense right so that's 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 kind of uh a, a conclusion we drew so what how does this episode i think play into that is is, is interesting the, the the problem with that that uh that comparison is that she's also human ostensibly um, although she could be a demon, that's not necessarily. She could be a robot. Yeah, She's you totally... could be a you could be a cold-hearted person. And right. Her well, is she, is she being coerced? Is she willingly doing this? Is this mm. like uh, this is like the only option? Um, mm. You know, it's it's. I I, I think uh, this episode gives her agency that was up in the air after you kind of like saw the demons talking to her and she kind of looked glossy eyed. And I was like, is she being mind controlled or something? I think like you don't get, you don't get the, that sense in this episode. Cause she's purposefully like pulling out the compact and checking oh, where yeah. they are. And she's yeah. like, I want to talk about questioning that. Emma creepily in the hallway. Yeah. She, she, yeah. Right. The, her questioning Emma in the hallway, that seems like she's like in charge, knows what she's doing. And, uh, is is purposefully trying to control them and be suspicious of them and sort of so like she she definitely that's that's a big conclusion i drew here she has agency in this and is um not simply just like uh, a slave to the to the demons like uh i mean she might be to a certain extent but uh she seems in charge and a a direct threat um that that we're going to be facing here well yeah like what would happen if i guess a riot like what happened if all the animals escaped at the farm like yeah. she like she would be responsible for that and mm-hmm. i have like no mm-hmm. doubt that the demons would then kill her or do something mm-hmm. yeah i mean you know just something bad would happen to her so she has a lot sort of at stake and if like people or i guess i don't i hate calling them animals but like if emma and like norman and ray or whoever like found out then 
like that could that could mean bad things for her. And so it it's interesting though that she's just sort of like toying with them versus just like taking care of the situation. Yeah. Cuz I feel like if she didn't care about them at least a little bit, then um she would probably just have already been done with them. Like, okay, because they said, oh, prepare to harvest like those three. And since those are the three that she's suspicious of, or at least Norman and Emma, then like, why not just ship them out early? Like, here you go. Give me my money or however she gets paid for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I think she's definitely com- last episode presented her complying to the demons, uh, um, which is, by the way, some, not it wasn't mm. pr- a, a point, but like last episode, the demon says harvest the, the three of them. And uh, that wasn't really brought up in this episode. So that's kind of like an undercurrent of danger. I think that um, they don't know about is that they're probably the next three to be harvested in two months, like like they said here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, whoever turns 12 first, presumably, would be the yeah. first of them right, to go. Right, but also, also the demon says take the three with the highest death scores. Um, so we don't we don't know how. I, well, thought that, I thought that would be soon, but I guess it might be a long proper preparation process. I feel like they yeah. know that they're the next ones on the list. Yeah, like, like, I mean, just because to the mom in the hallway, like, yeah, like, I'm sorry that I'm going to have to leave yeah, that's soon. True. Oh, so that's mm-hmm. true. I see what you're saying. So yeah, yeah. They, they, they know at least it's soon, if not next. Like, they know it's the yeah. And regardless, Emma wants to get out before two months because she wants everyone to live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I thought they overheard that they were next when they were still under the car. I thought they overheard yeah. that too. Oh, I guess they. Oh, yeah. I think I think there's some ambiguity when they left um, because yeah. they ran off at some point and we smash cut to them running off. So it's unclear if they heard uh, that part, I guess, or, or certain parts of, of the conversation. Um, I think that was towards the, I, 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 I could go back and rewatch. I think they wouldn't have heard that because they would have had to have a running start. Um, but it's, it's, but it's the it's thing not is like, yeah, they're all reaching the age of 12 soon. So they were going to, they were here. So they know way. that they were leaving either way. Yeah. yeah they, just based they, off of their age. Yeah, They know mm-hmm. they're leaving. So regardless, we have this two month deadline. Um, so a lot of, a lot of this episode is like lying to mom telling her that, uh, uh, that uh it was it wasn't them at the beginning they're like uh it's okay if we went to the wall but we didn't see anything or to the gate and but then they kind of change strategies i guess once they know it's up and it's like we can't we they when ma uh, she asked them uh if they went to the gate uh, they say no and uh it's I, I think a question is like does does she know it's them um i think so i want to know if- about the sure. tracking device, because before then, when yeah. she found the little girl in the forest, and then she opened the whatever thing. Right. Okay. Let's also bring in the tracking device to this conversation. So yeah, the the kid goes missing, and uh, mom comes back with the kid, and uh, Norman speculates. She pulls out a compact. She says, uh, Norman says, like she wants us to know that, or she wants to know whoever went that she has them under her thumb, and like, uh, mm. and she so the, and they speculate that there's tracking devices on them, and that like they don't have security measures like around the walls, but they are the security measures. They have it. They're tracking the mm-hmm. the children. Um, yeah. What well, what did you find interesting about all that, Allie? I just want to know how he well not how he deduced that, but how I don't know. I guess it would work. How they wouldn't have known about it before. I mean, I'm assuming maybe if they are do have tracking devices in them, it was like installed when they were like newborns or something. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> I don't want a scene where we have to watch them like digging it out of their flesh or anything because that's gonna mm, be gross. I and you know they that. always <laughs> do that in the movies, and I totally see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't could want definitely them. see that. Um, I th- I feel like since they're demons and they're like, I I view the demons as like on a plane of existence above to a certain like. At it's least also ver- like the future too. My right, guess yeah. is they yeah. wear their ta- their tattoos on their necks. Oh mm, oh oh yeah, it could be on the tattoos. I, yeah, I, f- I feel like it's not so simple as something they can dig out of this guy. Like it's like it's infused into a body part or something. What if it's their brain? Maybe it's no. like directly no, scanned. That could into damage the brain, the brain quality. That's true. I would not. Do that. That's yeah. risky. Yeah. The That's, oh, you're really concerned about idea. their their meat supply. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could really mess up the brain just putting stuff in there. Well, That's it's kind of like don't people put chips in their cats and dogs so that they get lost? They can find them yeah. now. That's a thing. Yeah, I don't think it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say it's not as simple as that. Probably given the fact that it's the that future was and I also it's demons. I definitely think it's the the numbers on their necks. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense actually. That's my think about that. Yeah, my it's interesting. Pops. I don't know how they'd get that off. Um, you can't <laughs> laser removal. That's the point. They're stuck. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, April, you so you think uh, Mom actually does know that it was the three of them? Yeah, the because, of them. and I think so. I think it's a. Uh, she's smarter than that because they they talk about in the first episode like how Mom's like super smart and all of that, mm. but then again. 
she's like sort of playing this game with them and she like purposely shows them the tracking device. And it's funny because Norman says something where uh, he's like, well, she only knows where we are whenever she checks. But what makes him think that she wouldn't have immediately checked? Yeah. Like as soon as she found bu- like the bunny and maybe they didn't show us that. And I think they purposely didn't show us like show her checking because they paused for a moment. And even if they hadn't paused, she still would have seen like them on the tracking, like running away from the gate. So I think she definitely knows, but she's sort of playing the game where she's like, maybe I suspect you, but I, mm-hmm. but I don't like, I think like, you're totally innocent. Terrifying chicken. Yes. <laughs> what's what's the what's the motivation for her not not doing something about it? Probably to catch them in the act of them running away. Yeah. Um. Could it be that she mm. the the motivation is still to preserve the the, the livestock like uh, like as long as possible? Yeah. Right. Like she wants to fully oh, yeah. harvest them at the opportune time. Um. So preserving, like going along with their game of uh, she gets is, more is, money that way. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that is on the table. Yeah, I don't think she's getting paid by. Uh, the- yeah, no, she's not getting paid. I I think her payment is being able to live past the yeah. age of twelve. Yeah. <laughs> she's already received her payment. Yeah, she's yeah. She wants to continue to live. Like, yeah, at least, at very least, I don't think it's commission based. Based on uh, yeah. the number. Why not? Yeah. She's got three really smart kids with perfect test scores. That's got to pay something. Yeah, that, right? that's it. Seemed like good harvest. Yeah, she'll yeah. get a high It's five. a very good harvest. Like she better be rewarded if she doesn't. I'm gonna go. <laughs> April, you're, like, you're talking so definitively. Pay me. me. <laughs> Look, Dylan, I'm about people getting what they deserve. <laughs> Mama <laughs> should definitely unionize. <laughs> oh my gosh. Her, her, her and Crone are going to get unionized. In the futuristic too. demon society. <laughs> That's going to be season two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, do we, what do we think of Sister Crone who comes in at the end here? Second caretaker to the. She to scares me. Quotes. She scares you? I don't know. Adults scare me. She's very big <laughs> and looming. The kids are scared. Yeah, yeah, she's very big and looming. <laughs> Emma and Norman are. We end on Aaron terrified expressions. I like how Ray is just chill. Ray doesn't the whole care. Thing. Yeah. Also, yeah. being very in the background. Chill. I hope we develop Ray more. Me too. I love that he was he just seems to be no things. Like he's chill, but he's like damn perceptive, mm-hmm. and I think that's interesting. Because if like Ray Norman and Emma are all very smart, but they're smart in in slightly different ways that complement each other, and that's why it feels like they're such a good team. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. This episode we get more answers. We could talk about Ray too. Uh, Crow and I think uh, interesting to see more of her character here. Um, it, it, def- we all, I think we all kind of think that she would be like we're on the same page as Emma and Norman probably that uh, she is an enemy as well. Um, like she, she, there's no way they're like oh here here's this. Uh, normal uh, caretaker she doesn't know what's going on she'll just uh care for the kids without because i feel like that's another strategy the demons could use is they could uh have have uh, adults that don't that don't understand either um that's true oh i don't i guess i don't know how you get it to that point you'd have to like uh control their perceptions of the world for a long time well they already kind of have like they've already demonstrated that they do that with the kids and i guess like mm. kids are a, a little bit more impressionable and it's easier to sort of it, it's easier to flesh out like some sort of belief like they're all orphans and they're at an orphanage waiting to get adopted and go to foster homes but and so maybe like it's not hard for like the demons to sort of pluck out like kids and sort of like mold them to fit like the hey so you remember how you grew up in that orphanage and then you went to a foster home like you've lived that experience now go be with these kids who are also living that kind of situation so i don't think it would be super like hard for them to like warp the mind of an adult to sort yeah, of maybe, maybe it's like mind, mind control to a certain extent or maybe they're just being truman showed for a longer period of time in their life i definitely no. i think the, i think the kids are being truman showed here i think i think that's basically what's happening and they're in a dome yeah. and uh yeah well the um, kids definitely are right because nobody to a certain extent, yeah least, yeah but no, it, what's really going on? But I, I, I think the question is like, is it? Does it look like Earth out there? You know, like is this even? It could not be Earth. It could just. What's be on the other planet. side of the wall? We don't know. Yeah, yeah, it could just be nothing but concrete. Yeah. Well, we saw. We kind of saw trees on the <laughs> other side of the wall. 
forever. Yeah. Concrete oh, forever. did you? Okay. But, oh. but it could just be a projection um, on a wall. On oh, a, like a, a hologram? Project. Yeah, like that's, I think Damn. that's how it works in Truman Show. Yeah, is that they, they like hit the, hit the dome and like, oh, there's nothing actually here. It just looks like there's something. God, here. if they really do wind up being Truman Show, I'm going to flip a table. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. Live uh, footage of Abby um, flipping a table. <laughs> <laughs> the show's on in the background. <laughs> we're all in a farm in reality. Wow. What if what if we're we're all being we're being true? Oh show. boy, that's the next level. Don't go there. To play. <laughs> Dangerous. All right, back back to Ray for a second, because we learn more about at the first episode you're like, Oh, Ray knows something. Like he 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 knows mm. more than he's letting on. This episode it mm, seems yeah. like he doesn't. It's like they tell him what's happening, he believes them right away. He's uh very cold and calculating about it, and he's like, Oh, we just have to escape with a few of them. And why are you being such an idiot, Norman? And his like standoff with Norman, and then Norman's like, uh, well, I like Emma. So I always I like Emma, so that's why I always wanted to be smiling. When he says I like Emma, I think he I interpret that romantically when he's saying like Skeeta, like uh I, I that's that's my sense. Allie is. It's what, not what always you, what it means, but, but I see you, where you're going from that. He, yeah. he he's just close like, to Emma. Mean, yeah, they're the three of them are the closest. Yeah. So the, the three of them are like a family. He's like, I'm not going to leave her alone. It could you? just be care for. It. We we made fun of John at the end really of last podcast her. for talking about shipping, but it yeah, turns no, out these there's kids a ship are here. eleven. Leave them <laughs> turns, yeah, turns out them. there is a ship <laughs> in this show. <laughs> the uh, ship is family. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we haven't seen enough of, of Ray to really get his perception. But I think the thing with Ray, it's not that, like, of course, he wants to, to leave with Emma and Norman. They're his best friends. But yeah. he knows that Emma is, like, so good with the kids. And the kids, like, love her and trust her. And she has that bond with all these other kids. Ray doesn't necessarily have that kind of close friendship with anyone else in the orphanage. So for him, he's like, okay, I got my two people that's enough book <laughs> but even norman was... emma's not gonna be that way and he's like well if i can convince norman to be on the same page maybe together like we can show emma that this is crazy to take everyone but instead what ends up happening is the opposite of what he wanted norman's like no no let's do it like emma thinks it's a good idea yeah i think we can make it work let's just think about it in a different way and he's like you're both idiots but like of course i can't leave you I you're my two good. best friends glad that norman established like i was afraid to die and that's why like i would cry but Emma was crying because she didn't yeah. want her family to die. So yeah. they like they know she's like the best of them. Yeah, I like so they yeah. want to follow her. Yeah. He, he admires her spirit and commitment to other people. That's part of what makes her character so exciting. And I I really like that because Emma is like low key kind of the leader. Yeah. Even though like they're all brilliant. Like Emma has the heart and the willingness to like get people to do what she wants because she's so passionate, and that's its own kind of power, which I think is really cool. And so they're all she funny. genuinely cares too. Yeah, so. she's like. the real mom friend. She's actually the real mom. <laughs> real mom. I'm gonna get back to part of them in a second, but yeah, Ray, uh, with the hallway scene more in there. But um, yeah, uh, so yeah, Ray, Ray here. Um, seem do we think Ray does know more than he's letting on? I guess that's no. still a question here. Um, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if like they later mm-hmm. revealed that he knows, like he he knows more than what he's letting on. Just because, like, he's sort of that silent, like, like Watchful. intellect. Yeah, like he's very perceptive, uh, and they 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 make it a point to say that he's perceptive too. So I feel like that's something that's going to like sort of come back, come back around, and they're yeah. gonna be like, like he's gonna be like, okay, so from what I've seen, and they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, Ray, you're so perceptive, and we're gonna be like, <laughs> we already know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I could see him having a <laughs> bunch of guys- like. Okay. theories and stuff and speculations mm-hmm. but i don't think he actually knows anything for a hundred percent sure like yeah that that's the impression the episode gives up it is possible like because he believes them right away it is possible he knew of something already um mm-hmm. but i think that probably a little more to ray still i think than's letting on but this episode does qualm a little bit of of the the sp- suspicious shot of ray that we got for like he definitely at least knows when something's up because even when he was yeah, like five like, he was like that's him. totally a lie yeah yeah Right, that, that, that's still that, that opening scene, right, of him being younger and still understanding yeah. that something was wrong. Or he, even, had, he had to have looked into it at some point, I feel yeah. like. Or yeah. even, like, the scene whenever, like, they go up to the yeah. fence, and mm-hmm. he's like, there's clearly not danger there, which then later makes sense because there's that huge wall on the other side of the fence. But, like, even then, he's just like, well, like, if we were in danger, don't you think the fence would be higher? Like... And they're like, oh, I guess that's a good point. What if he knew like, about the wall? The yeah. Whole time and he definitely has like a back door entrance in the wall. 
He's been carving it out for years. Exactly. I know. I, see, yeah, no, I, think, I think there's going to be something Ray's been working on it. Yeah, I agree with that. I think he's been doing something this whole time. I think that would be, cool. yeah. it would make things way more interesting. Yeah. Make it way yeah. easier. Right, so yeah. We'll see what's like, right. here. There's, I, I drilled a tunnel. Not drilled. Yeah, I dug no, a tunnel. It's convenient. <laughs> Ray, Ray just had, I, had this ready. Hit it with uh, this poster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to shank and. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Shock <laughs> Ray. Yeah, this is this is we're just gonna this is all gonna be like uh, '90s movies the entire time. Uh, this, this show is gonna reference. Yeah, um, the last parts of the scene. Uh, Norman says, "I I won't let her die. That's why I'm gonna utilize myself." Um, which to me is like he's willing to sacrifice himself to save Emma. That's yeah. what I took that as. Um, that's time. that that goes towards or my he's interpretation. Just like, I'm of, really smart because he also kind of says like I've never like lost at anything I've put my mind true. to yeah, before. Yeah. So he seems very confident that using his brains he can pull this off. He does. He does seem confident. Yeah, yeah. and that 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 line is also what lended my interpretation of uh, his feelings being romantic. Um, it's kind of like a very I won't let her die. I'll utilize my kind of romantic. Thing to say. But um, <laughs> you snort. You don't <laughs> don't <laughs> diss the ship. Okay, it's the ship. They're eleven. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> let them just be kids. They're being like. Uh, what's it called? Raised for the slaughter. There's no time for shipping. There is no time. The dis- if any show has Man, no time for shipping, it is this show. No that, is that. <laughs> that is true. That is true. We've only got two months now. Come on now. <laughs> uh, and then at the, at the end, Ray, like I guess, kind of gives in to help them. He's he's like, oh, I'll f- I'm forced to help you. Um, is kind of the conclusion. And he's smart, like I mean, he does. No one else is trying to escape. Like now that he know or, or he's discovered the truth of what's going on, like. I'd be like, your plan sounds crazy, but I'm in. Like, I, I, yeah, I, got nothing I, I, th- my, I think it's possible Ray is going to be like, uh, when push comes to shove, he might not go along with actually trying to save everyone if he thinks another way will be better. Yeah, but he, yeah, I think yeah. So too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. He just Good starts day. killing the kids himself. <gasps> oh no, <laughs> April. <laughs> April. <laughs> I realized what I said as it was coming out of my mouth. <laughs> No, I want that to like happen that now. Him. That's a risky that's a risky thing to do for Ray if he wants Emma improve, to be his friend improve, later. He just their odds stabbing six year olds left and right. <laughs> yeah, he's not <laughs> Anya Skywalker. Oh yeah, should should be noted, no dead kids in this episode. So yeah, that's nice. actually. Yay. Oh, oh. Dead Connie again. At the beginning. We saw. Dead. We did see Dead Connie. Again. She was already dead in, in the dream. Count. But um, yeah. I wonder how many uh, over fifty percent, uh, under fifty percent episodes will feature kids dying in the show. <laughs> Seems like over, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, who does over Because if these three are supposed to be shipped out in two months... Well, yeah, I guess the the two-month thing makes it seem like it's possible none will, but something's going to go wrong at some point, right? Someone gets sick, someone... Now they're too old. I mean, this is, I think, the thing we're forgetting. So, like, you know, like, Mama, Isabella, she's the main threat, right? Like, there are all these kids, there's one of her, but she's, like, really freaking smart. She's noticed so much but the fact that she is called in backup clearly means business because well, i don't think yeah. i've ever had another adult in that entire orphanage before at the same time i think it's only ever been mama right. that's that, a pretty that, big that's, that's the impression you get is that she calls in backup but right uh, but it's it's not not we don't know that for sure or but maybe they the had backup yeah. called in for her maybe right? she, yeah she didn't yeah. plan to have sister chrome there and simply because like the little bunny was discovered they were just like oh well there's clearly a breach in your security yeah. like here's a sister crown <laughs> enjoy <laughs> that would have looked badly on her i don't know if she'd want to report that directly to her superiors though P- possible the demons saw but they, 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 they did the demons weren't there in the shot that we saw at the end yeah. of the last episode um or possible she's forced to report everything i wouldn't be surprised yeah. at that um yeah but she probably would want the demons that. did it behind her back she she's just like great. <laughs> I could I could see the demons great doing it. Guys, a, great. I don't want a roommate. I feel like, we should, like a, we should have seen a scene of her being angry at that though if this was not something she approved. I like that we're not getting a whole lot of like insight as to her part of it. We we don't have her perspective. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. I like that we don't have her perspective though. Me too. I think it keeps her menacing. Yeah. Yeah, we don't really if we saw her perspective we might start to understand and sympathize and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm already about her about getting that. paid out for. Yeah, April already wants her to get paid. It's so least. nice if she got money for doing this, but I don't know. All right, quick, quickly to the uh, last thing is the hallway scene again. We talked about most of it, but um, 
the uh, yeah, this jump cut to, to mom face to face with uh, Emma, and and then and then you're like, oh no, what's Emma going to do? And then she plays it cool, and even to the extent where she's like, I wonder what Connie's doing right now. I was like, like oh no. my god, no. savage! He's like Why? driving it home. It's like, <laughs> god, honey, no. That was my favorite part of the episode. Was that from her? Like, Mine oh too. my goodness, I, I didn't like, know she was capable know. of that. Right? Like, that's crazy. She wanted to be a mom just like you. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she'll make a wonderful adult. The fact that she's yeah, then mom a wonderful says that, adult yeah. uh, like one of me. Or, yeah. Both of them are being brutal. <laughs> Just, They're both like, being brutal. They're like, being yeah, savage. Emma is properly conforming to how brutal so mom is. So much shade. Uh, yeah. Like Emma just having the courage to do that, I feel like is is That is was nuts. really impressive. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. I did not, not expect that. that. I would. I'm a, I feel. I, how? How is? I don't know. Like that, that's nuts. That all all of these kids can act so composed in the situation. I feel like partly it's because they're kids. I feel like. Yeah. You know, maybe it'd be harder for us in the situation because being like more aware of things and having more world weary. Like maybe just be, like maybe their age lends lends uh, possibilities to them actually getting out. I don't know. Mm. I think you have a They're also there. really sure. smart. I feel like those kids are way yes. smarter yes. than me. Yes, April. Yeah, <laughs> they're smarter exactly. than us. Okay, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. than me. I didn't say us. <laughs> I remember, no, April's right though. I remember reading this and being like, "How do they keep coming to these crazy logical conclusions in five seconds?" And then I remembered, like, they're getting three, like. 300 points on these crazy you have, you like have nine seconds to answer each question what? <laughs> there's there's a reason why like they're allowed to live to the age of 12 like they're probably the smartest cattle for miles around for miles. So, yeah. they're like freaking smart kids they're smarter than us by like a long shot and that's what makes it kind of exciting too because they're they're actually able to hold their own in these situations that are so high pressure and so dire. And that's part of what makes it such a fun show. Right. They're definitely very smart. I think maybe the demons are like grooming their intelligence to like be superhuman, you know, like, like it's better for their brains to it's higher quality meat. So maybe like uh, through demon influence, like with these tests and stuff, they can actually be like even smarter than humans would be capable of otherwise or something like that's like a two a two headed two edged sword right there they want them to be smart so they can yeah, have their smart brains great. but then they can like, escape. if yeah. if you want it as far as possible then like what if it gets too smart to be able to be eaten anymore i don't know demons you might find out yeah that's like uh building robots you know make them <laughs> smart so they can help us but uh then yeah what, that, that type of thing <laughs> then what's uh, what if, happens what if like the demons are actually humans who've um taken some kind of crazy hormones or who knows what, See, that's what and I'm they've thinking. evolved into them and so maybe there's like a possibility that like that's where like everyone's human except like the demons are like a more evolved version of hum- humanity that comes from like science and so that's and they're like yeah but in this demon form we must eat human flesh and it's become very cannibalistic at that point yeah no i like that that's i cool. like that a lot more i feel yeah. like that make it more interesting <laughs> it's just random demons being a plot point i like dark things <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think uh, anything with the outside world is possible right now, basically. Um, yes. They could Just be in really any it's location. It's actually normal human society. <laughs> oh, Listen, hey, this is going to be us in how many years? 25 years? What is this? 45? Yeah, just the future. Yeah. yeah. This will be... Choose your sides, everybody. If <laughs> Choose Donald your sides. You better be a human. This is what the future a- of America. <laughs> what? Who's, why are we choosing the demon side? Why is that... <laughs> Have you seen our government? <laughs> oh, you want the? <laughs> I want to be a farmer. <laughs> I think April. I think it's clear that you would. You would chose. side with good, the demons. Good yeah. choice, I guess. So, <laughs> April would okay. side with the the, the paying the paying demons. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't want to be a demon, but if that if it means staying alive, I'll feed them. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> see maybe that's exactly how mama feels honestly right no that is the no i think it's like a biting commentary on people to feel yeah that yeah way, so, yeah uh, see, in the terrible system uh, okay uh i think we hit on everything here michelle final thoughts on this episode i'm really excited for episode three i wonder what they're gonna cover <laughs> Okay. Don't act like you don't know. Well, she doesn't know how much it's they're gonna. gonna yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's been a while since I read it, so we'll see. Okay, I'm excited but, though. I want. Yeah. I want to see more Sister Crone, man. Yeah, certainly think we'll see more Sister Crone with her yeah. introduction at the end of this episode. Uh, April, final thoughts here. Um, these 
past two episodes have been great. I'm super excited for the third one. Um, I really want to. I really want to know Sister Crone. She she looks like a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> I if I'd call the person fun, trying to kill you and eat you fun, a fun time. I've but... never been categorized that way before. She looks like a fun time. <laughs> she looks like okay. fun. <laughs> okay, so we'll see where Sister Crone. Allie, final thoughts. I just noticed the, um, what is this, like the icon for the anime, and they're standing on a plate that is also a clock, and the fork mm. and the knives are the handles, so. Wow. Combining the two, the two biggest yeah. imagery with the show, yeah, yeah. Food, food and time. Yeah. Those are my final thoughts. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> that hungry. time will be. Food. I want episode three. I'm hungry for more. Okay, hungry for more. Yay. Yes, uh, yes. We'll find out with episode three on. Uh, yeah, it looks like Thursdays at eleven. I think is when the show's coming. Eastern time yes. is when the show's coming out. So um, <laughs> Thursday yeah, so, not far. Yeah, no. not bad. Not bad. It's we'll, just weird because it comes out on Fridays. It's <clears throat> weird yeah i don't know what japan time that is probably over Friday. but um <laughs> yeah uh yeah we'll probably if we if we continue podcasts probably over the weekend for for this so a few days after the premiere so we'll look out for these um but yeah very excited for next episode let us know you thought of this episode to a promise neverland or anything we discussed here at overly animated.com in the article comment section or on youtube at youtube.com slash overly animated in the comment section for the video on youtube as well um you can also talk about it with us on discord at overly animated.com slash discord on our anime channel um and support us via patreon at patreon.com slash overly animated thank you very much to all of our current patrons especially our page on the podcast rachel aka rachel rose and thanks as well as our patron executive producers john ryan steve alex and hugh um yep we'll be back to cover episode three check out busy uh time right now with a bunch of new shows airing check out ruby young justice steven universe uh coverage all uh recurring right now including huge week next week with a bunch of finales also uh yeah we'll see about episode three we have a lot of stuff to cover next weekend uh the big ruby finale um the young justice finale is uh potentially the genlock premiere um the steen universe finale coming up on monday big big week coming up so um and then new episode of this show so find all that at overlyanimated.com thanks for listening guys and we will see you next time bye bye bye, bye.